careful study of the Dallas Police Department has convinced us that it is one of the finest departments in this country. What is most impressive about it is that it is eager to undertake a program of development which can take it beyond any other department we know about. The Police Foundation wants to be a part of this program. I think that the people of Dallas have reason to be proud of their department and of their government. I think you can be especially proud of your chief who after one year has become one of the most important leaders in America of the police profession. Technically what we're going to do is simply observe police arrest. When police stop a car and begin searching it, we're going to approach it, obtain the people that are being searched as you know, names. We're going to get the police officers' names and badge numbers and observe what goes on. According to the law, an officer is only allowed to search a car for weapons, and only then if he's in immediate fear of his life. It's very difficult for an officer to justify looking in a trunk for a weapon because he's in fear of his life. He can only look in the immediate area around the driver. And we intend to put a stop to illegal searches and seizures by documenting it. We only feel there are a few police officers doing this. We only feel there are a few police officers harassing people and, you know, needlessly. And we're going to put a stop to that and get those particular officers removed from the force or transferred to a different area. Well, I have no uh, reaction other than this. I would hope that while they're patrolling that area to watch for police activity, I would hope that they watch for crime activity as well and report that to the police department so we can take care of it. Well, uh, feeling in Austin is that they have already given to the city uh, some tax benefit. And it uh, will not be easy to do, but we still think that there is a, a pretty good feeling for this type of thing. Your meeting tonight is going to consist of uh, probably the most influential of the legislators when it comes to getting permission legislation like this. What do you expect to accomplish tonight? Well, I think the thing we want to accomplish tonight is to get unanimity, if we can, among our group in the legislature. And uh, if we do, I think that uh, we have a good opportunity of getting such a bill through.
too soon for you to say what this is going to mean to the citizen on the street in terms of better police protection? It's too soon for them to expect results uh, right away, but it's not too soon for me to tell you what uh, they can expect because this is going to be a long-range, comprehensive, in-depth uh, human resource development plan which will permit us to develop our human resources to the maximum potential. That, in effect, will create for the person on the street an understanding and a respect for one of the finest police departments in the country, staffed with the most uh, competent police personnel in the country. So what it means then is a professional police service for the citizens in the city of Dallas uh, much more quickly than other police departments will be able to realize that goal. If city councilmen and county commissioners can convince the legislators in Austin this evening that permissive legislation should be passed, it could mean as much as a million dollars a year apiece for the city and the county. The state controller's office estimates revenues from the 10 cent liquor by the drink tax at $42 million. Assuming that Dallas County has about 10% of the population, and that's pretty close, 10 cents would bring in $4.2 million a year. So dividing a 5 cent tax would mean slightly over a million dollars apiece to the city and the county. That would be a considerable relief to homeowners who kick in a major share of taxes. And the homeowners apparently have come to recognize this. At yesterday's city council meeting, Jerry Bartis, representing a group of Dallas homeowners, told councilmen they would either get some revenue from liquor by the drink, or homeowners would vote against the amendment. It wouldn't seem that there would be too much trouble convincing the legislature that cities should put their own tax on liquor by the drink. The cities can point to increased law enforcement requirements, which will have to be paid for somehow. And Dallas can point also to its hotel and motel tax, which was put into effect even before the legislature gave the city the go-ahead. The so-called dry legislators in Austin are expected to vote for the tag-on tax simply as a challenge to WETs to prove that liquor by the drink can pull in the revenue that the WETs have claimed for it. The stumbling block may be the liquor industry which seems to fear a loss in sales if another tax is tacked onto the shot glass. But if those homeowners are serious, and they certainly seem to be, the lobbyists may be caught between a rock and a hard place. Either they can approve the extra tax, or face the possibility of not having liquor by the drink at all, at least for another year. Phil Reynolds, Channel 8 News on the Move. Amendment number four would actually authorize the state of Texas to sell $100 million in general obligation bonds that would be used for loans to cities. Now, this would actually mean more than the $100 million because it would enable the federal government then to provide more funds in matching grants and loans. Mayor Stovall explained exactly why this particular amendment would mean over seven and a quarter million dollars to the city of Fort Worth. The expansion of the Village Creek Sewer Treatment Plant by 1975 or additional enlargements that we need will cost a total of approximately $33 million. If amendment number four is passed or is favorable to the voters, we would receive $18 million in federal aid. And that would be $7,260,000 more than we could receive under the existing the construction that's going on now at Village Creek Sewage Treatment Plant is only one of several to come. By 1975, it's hoped that this plant will be so big that the controversial Riverside Sewage Treatment Plant will be phased out completely. Mayor Stovall says that it would help if the city could get this extra seven and a quarter million dollars. Jay Lewis, Channel 8 News on the move at the Village Creek Sewage Treatment Plant.
Uh, I am extremely impressed with some of the 2,000 student nurses. Uh, they seem very interested in education. They're well-mannered. We're just extremely impressed with the future nurses. Are you getting enough recruits? I um, can't answer that. I'm afraid we'll ha never have enough nurses to meet all of our needs. Of course, uh, hospitals and universities from all over the country are in Dallas for this convention. But what about the Dallas Hospital Council? Are you uh, doing any good recruiting here? Uh, we are doing some excellent recruitment. Dallas is a place where the students like to live. Oh, we're featuring many things, the 240 Days of Sunshine, the Center for Men and Money. By the way, money. it rained all the way. <laughs> the Center for Men and Money, and especially the ways to upgrade their education.